How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job in the world options trading academy. And we're getting ready to go into our weekend stock market talk for 11-6-2021. Uh, what we're going to primarily do is talk about what happened in the market over the past week, what we think might be coming up in the early week. Uh, also kind of talk about a topic of the day dealing with the infrastructure bill. And the goal of this particular video is to put you in a position to where you get a better understanding of the market and you kind of learn how to leverage the market and utilize the market to work for the best benefit of you and your particular group. Uh, what we try to do in this particular video is talk about the market in a really common tongue. Not make people feel like um, they have to have a Ph.D. or they have to be one of those people on CNBC with a suit on to really understand how the market works. And what we're going to kind of talk about is how so much of your daily life is interwoven in the financial markets that those markets are impacting your daily life, whether you know it or not. So what we kind of do is try to get you to understand that and also start to understand how you can leverage what's going on in these markets to help you and your family. So really quickly, this show is sponsored by www.thehighestpaid.online. And what that is, is an options training academy uh, that works for three different types of people. First person is a person that is dissatisfied with the amount of money that they make. They don't believe they make enough money. The third person is the person that is dissatisfied with the amount of time they got to take away from their family or their loved ones to make the amount of money that they're making. And the third person is the person that doesn't like the fact that there's a cap on their income. What we mean is that at the beginning of the year, they know exactly how much money they're going to make. And what we've discovered is that by leveraging the options market and being able to successfully trade options for profit, we figured out how to solve these problems. It's not an overnight success story. Uh, it will take some work. It will take some commitment and will take a desire to get results. Right. So if you have that desire to get results, we can help you get those results and we'll be here to continue to help you to get those results. But your desire to get those results has to be really, really strong. And that's to be something that you want to really invest in. I would tell you to go to the particular website, look into it and be willing to invest in your success. So let's get right back to it. So what we saw in the market this week is um, the week, it, the week it was a green candle on the spy. I believe the same thing for the QQQ. And we'll pull those up in a second. Um, and what we're seeing from a seasonality standpoint is that we believe that uh, the overall market from an S&P standpoint is going to be bullish. So let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. So looking at the equity clock, you know, what we see in, in uh, November is, we, you know, historically we may see a small sell off and then we go right back into really, really bullish behavior. Uh, I think as we get closer and closer to the end of the month. We're going to get closer and closer to that bullish run, uh, but we might see it Monday starting uh, because of the infrastructure bill passing and the market may be become very bullish based on that. Or we may find out that a lot of that enthusiasm was already baked into the uh, into the indexes. So they may not. So we just need to observe it. However, historically, as we get closer to the later of the month, the overall market becomes a lot more bullish. Because we get a rally. Because fourth quarter is really, really big for consumer based businesses. And there's a lot of ancillary benefit to B2B uh, because a lot of times they serve those consumer based businesses. So they also make money. Now, supply chain issues may impact that. Maybe some overall uh, macroeconomic situation may have a negative impact on it, but we need to observe it. But what I'm looking for, and this is not investment advice, I'm looking for the market to pretty much be relatively bullish next week, especially if the earnings next week are really, really good. So let's go ahead and go into the earnings. So in looking at earnings, <clears throat> excuse me, what we're looking at is let me get the earnings up real quick. So, you know, massive earnings next week, PayPal, AMC, Roblox, Clover, Lemonade, a lot of companies that are proven and also unproven, Marriott, uh, Trade Desk, eHealth, Zynga, U.S. Foods, Palantir, Neo. Coinbase, Workhorse, I think they're done. I think they got another uh, SEC investigation. I think the Department of Justice might be after them too. Upstart, uh, Fubo TV, DR Horton, Plug Power, uh, Village, DoorDash, that's going to be interesting. I don't know what that Japanese one is. Fiverr, that's going to be interesting. SoFi, Wendy's, Walt Disney, Wish, Affirm, Open Door, Mastercraft, Bolt Holdings. People down south know about that. Uh, Monday.com, Beyond Meat, Root, Tattoo Chef, 
Blink, PaySafe, Yeti, Wix. People know about Wix. Lordstown, they got some of the same issues that Workhost got. Uh, Shift, Tapestry. Friday, AstraZeneca. New York City Re that may be interesting. I may just I may uh, alert that one. I think that's going to be interesting because I heard New York City from a commercial standpoint is not doing that great. That's going to be interesting. I'm glad I saw that one. So we got some good earnings coming out. So if some of these earnings are going to be positive. You can really push the market in, a, in even a more bullish direction. Um, but we just want to continue to observe it. And so, like I say, make a bull case and make a bear case and then trade it. If you're going to trade some of these companies on earnings, always remember about IV crush. It may be better to wait until after earnings to try to figure out whether to enter. Uh, if you do enter before earnings, just understand that you're going to need a massive movement uh, in line with the expected movement to make sure that you don't get IV crushed. So you could get a good earnings or a bad earnings based on, you know, your analysis. But if you don't get the share price movement that is within or really exceeds the expected movement, you're going to get IV crushed because what they're going to do is right before earnings, they're going to move the IV forecast in line with the expected move. And then if you don't get that expected move at the open or, you know, along the first few minutes or first hour of the open, you're going to get a massive IV crush. So you got to understand that. So I would just tell you to make sure that you manage your risk uh, and put yourself in the best position to be successful. Now, let's go into the U.S. economic calendar. OK, make sure we're on point. Right here. And so what we're looking for on the 8th, what I'm really looking for is CPI on Wednesday. You know, CPI, uh, is that number going to be in line with expectations or going to be higher? Um, I think that's going to be a number Thursday, Veterans Day. And then Friday, you know, we're going to get job openings in five-year preliminary inflation. But I think the CPI number could really be important, but we got to kind of see how the market's going to react to it. And I don't really think that's going to be that big of a deal as opposed to also jobless claims. Uh, the market can maybe get spooked over jobless claims. It may not. Um, I don't think that number is as big as what people say it is, but you know, it gets, it comes out every week. So that's just something that you want to kind of make sure that you observe, but I want to look at, see what that CPI number looks like uh, to try to get a, a, a grasp of where we think inflation is, even though that is a lagging number. So it just kind of gives you almost last month's inflation, but not what we're currently going through right now. Now let's go ahead and try to look at some of these charts before we get up on out of here. But we also got to do the topic right here. Uh oh, wrong one. My bad. Okay, there we go. So we're looking at the spy. So we're looking at the one year on a weekly candle. And what do we see? We just see, you know, really bullish behavior. Right. So over the past right here, 10, 4, 10, 11, 10, 18, 10, 25, 10, 01, bullish. We close at what? 468. So we're almost at 470. So if we look at this on a two year chart, it's just been going up ever since we came up out of the pandemic. We've had some minor sell offs. But historically, so, you know, I tell people all the time, the spies designed to go up long term. We did get a massive dump here because of the pandemic. But, you know, once you feel like that is a no longer a possibility. You know, just long term leaps. You know, and you can just cash out, reinvest and keep going. Will you get some sell offs? Yeah, you can get some sell offs. The market will sell off every now and then. But long term, this particular uh this particular ETF is designed to go up because it's really based on the overall market. It's tracking the overall market. The overall market is designed to go up. Um, so that's the same thing. We look at the five day. We see a gap up on Friday. Uh, let me zoom out some more. And we see that same bullish pattern. Right. Gap up on Friday. It, it filled the gap and it moved back up off of that. Uh, so that's what we're seeing. So we want to keep looking at the spot to be bullish. Let's look at the QQQ. My fault. Let's stay up there. It's all these ads they're serving up. Mm. 
man, these ads is just they're taking over the page. Okay. Let me go to the one week. And you see the same thing. It's just been bullish. 10 4, 10 11, 10 18. And that's now at 398, pushing past the 400. Uh, you know, and looking at the one year, you know, you're not even seeing a, like a range of trading on the weekly. You're just seeing just it pushing up off of every every drop. Every time it drops, it's pushing off, it's pushing back off, it's pushing back off. So you're not even seeing like any at all, any uh consolidation really on the weekly. You're just seeing a lot of really bullish activity. And so that's just what we want to continue to look for. Unless we get something different, you know, on the weekly. Looking at the uh daily on the one year. Let me zoom out. And you can see a little bit of range bound behavior, but from really right here, which is 1013, it's been a really strong push up off of that uh, 360 mark. It's been really, really strong up. So this is why I tell people all the time, you know, look at some of these indexes and look at some of these ETFs um, because a lot of people overlook them because they're not talked about every day because they're not companies. Um, but they're easier to trade for some people because when they got a mass amount of volume, the contracts are relatively inexpensive um, because of the volume. Uh, and they're really designed to go up. And so you can play it intraday, but you also can play it longer term because you understand that the QQQ by design is designed to move up. It's not like a company to where you, you know, they could have a bad quarter and it just sells off really, really hard. Uh, this is kind of tracking the overall market. I think it's tracking the overall NASDAQ. So you got to really understand like what it's designed to do uh, and how it's composed and how that can put you in the best position to trade it. So um, that's not investment advice. It's just something I think you may want to consider because it may be easier for you to trade this than maybe trade a company where you got to worry about a bad earnings or maybe a bad guidance or, you know, the company going bankrupt or the company getting investigated by the SEC. And that can essentially could eliminate a lot of your plays. Now let's go into the particular topic that we're talking about. And I want to kind of show you. Um, if I can, some information on the infrastructure bill, I believe got passed just yesterday. Okay. So we're talking about what's in a 550 billion bipartisan infrastructure bill. I know this is from July 28th, but I want you to kind of understand it, uh, and how it can impact the market. We got roads and bridges. We got public transit. We got railways. We got power grids. We got electric vehicles. We got electric buses, we got airports and waterways, we got climate change, drinking water, broadband, internet, environmental spending, transportation safety, and then how they're going to raise revenue. So with the bill passing, you want to kind of ask yourself what corporations that I may be trading or maybe even in long term can be positively or negatively impacted by this particular bill based on what areas we think it's going to cover. I heard that Tesla is not going to benefit from it as much as people thought, because I heard they use all their tax credits up, but I think you should go investigate that and make sure that's accurate information because I just read that. But you wanna kinda of ask yourself what particular uh, sectors of the economy are gonna really benefit from this, then what companies that are in that sector are gonna really benefit from it, or what sectors are gonna be negatively impacted by this, what companies in that sector are gonna be negatively impacted, and what extent do you think that will be based on this particular bill, and then you just should play it from there. So if you got any questions, reach out to me. Glad you came through. This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.